Okay, welcome to the first lecture in AP Physics C. This lecture is going to be on center of mass, um, and then we're going to go off into kinematics, but I want to start off with something uh, a little bit more hands-on. And so, your homework, make sure you do this, watch the lecture, um, go through it, make sure you understand it. We're going to come in day one and start right away on a problem set, do an experiment, and get moving with the class. So, um, first of all, what is center of mass? Center of mass it's the point where all the mass of an object can be considered to be concentrated. Um, for almost all objects, center of mass and center of gravity are in the same spot. And um, there are multiple ways of finding the center of mass. One way is experimentally, which we're going to do on the first day when you come in. We'll make some things and find the center of mass experimentally, but also analytically. And we can do it analytically either algebraically or with calculus. We are going to cycle back and do this later once we've got some calculus under our belts. But for now, we're going to be finding the center of mass analytically. That's when we use the math. And we're going to be doing this algebraically. And so here are the, the equations. Really, they're all the same equation, just applied to the different dimensions, x, y, and z. If we're dealing with a three-dimensional object, then we're going to end up with three coordinates for the center of mass of the object. Most of the problems we do are going to be um, two-dimensional or one-dimensional, where we're finding the center of mass. but um, so this is x. xcm is the x-coordinate of the center of mass. You know, ycm is the y-coordinate, z is the z-coordinate of the center of mass. And we calculate it by taking 1 divided by capital M. Capital M is the total mass of the object. Just make sure you can see it. All right, so that's the total mass. And then what we do is we multiply this by um, a series of products of a piece of mass times the coordinate of that piece of mass. So really it looks like this. Um, M1, X1, plus M2, X2, etc. Right. The idea is, right, this is the summation symbol, and um, I take, I have a, a bunch of masses, or I have one mass that I split up into pieces. This is the mass of each piece, of each individual piece, and this is the x-coordinate of that uh, center of mass of that individual piece, right? And why this is the y-coordinate, the z-coordinate of the center of mass of each individual piece. Uh, one of the things to notice here, it's always important to pay attention to units. Let me tell you, I have survived whole parts of my physics education just paying attention to units. So let's look at the units here. 1 over m, so this is 1 over kilograms, and then this, this is kilograms times meters. So this ends up just being meters, which is for a location coordinate. That's exactly what we want. Uh, so let's take a, li a look at an example now. So in our first example, we have the sun and the earth. And we want to know where is the center of mass of this system, earth-sun system. So plan of action. First thing we do is uh, draw it and then come up with a coordinate axis. So draw like an x, y, uh, coordinate axis. If you have a z, then you do a z, but in this case, it's just going to be x and y. And really, we're only going to need to do this for one dimension. So, one, step one, coordinate axis in a drawing. Two, locate the center of mass of each body in the system. You know, so, where's the center of mass of the sun? Where's the center of mass of the earth? It's just going to be at the center of each sphere or circle is the way we draw it. Then we're going to calculate the center of mass for each coordinate, right? Calculate center of mass in the y, calculate the center of mass in the x, um, and then final, finally just state the center of mass. This is the coordinate, these are the coordinates of the center of mass of the system. All right, so let's take a look now. For this uh, system, what I'm going to do is put the center of mass at the sun. We usually want to choose where we put the origin kind of strategically. If we can put it at the center of mass of one of the objects, that really helps because then that center of mass is going to cancel out. It's going to be zero in our equation. Um, and so this is, what are the coordinates here? Zero, zero, right? And then this is going to be 1.5 times 10 to the 11th, zero, zero. Those are the XYZ coordinates for the Earth's center of mass with respect to the center of the sun. Okay, now what? Well, we take, a, we take this, and we just fill it in now. So x center of mass is going to be 1 over m. Uh, and the to what's the total mass in this case? The total mass is going to be the mass of the sun. Let's just say 
996 times 10 to the 24th, or 10 to the 30th, sorry, plus um, 5.96 times 10 to the 24th kilograms times, right, so this is the total mass. Notice, by the way, this is pretty much inconsequential. This uh, is practically nothing compared to this, so we don't even, if we were to add these together, this wouldn't even show up on the significant figures. Um, but, so now I put in here the mass of the sun times the x-coordinate of the sun. So this is 1.996 times 10 to the 30th times 0. Right, so this is nice because that's 0. It's nice that we put that axis. If we put the axis somewhere else, that wouldn't have been 0. We wouldn't have that term just disappearing. Okay. And so now, uh, plus, now we put in the next one, right? Which would be Earth in this case. And so the Earth's mass is 5.96 times 10 to the 24th times 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters. Right? So the Earth's math, mass times its um, coordinate. And so this ends up being 4.5 times 10 to the 5th meters. This is the center of mass of the Earth-Sun system. And notice, this is actually interesting, that this distance is less than the radius of the Sun. So the center of mass of this whole thing is actually still within the Sun. And so if we just had the Earth and the Sun revolving around each other, they would actually be revolving around some common center of mass that's just near the Sun. The Sun would actually be wobbling a little bit. And this, by the way, is how exoplanets are discovered. Planets going around other stars are discovered because they look at the Sun, the star of that system. And when they see the, that star wobbling a little bit, they're able to calculate the, the mass of the other planet and how far away it is. Um, that's one of the ways that they find um, planets going around other stars. Anyway, side note. So what if? This was a simple example because we've got um, two spherical objects. That's it. We put the origin at one of the centers. Um, so what if we have a system of uniform, regularly shaped solid bodies? When we say uniform, we mean uniform density, right? It's the same amount of mass per area or per volume. And if that's the case, then we can do it algebraically, like this. What if it's uh, uniform, but the things are irregularly shaped? There, uh, you can do it experimentally, first of all. Or you can do it using calculus. You'd have to use calculus somehow. Um, if they're non-uniform, so we have a changing density throughout you know, a solid or something like that, then you'd also have to use calculus. Uh, what if it has holes in it? If it has a hole, we can actually treat that as negative mass. What we do is we take the mass of the whole thing, subtract the mass of that one hole, and find it that way. That's going to be example three. But for now, we're going to do example two. In example two, we have a, a plate that's shaped with these kind of rectangles and stuff. Um, and notice here that we're not given the mass of the body. In fact, we're not given any units at all. All we see is these squares kind of stacked up. However, since it's uniform, mass is directly proportional to area. So each area has the same mass. And so we're just going to substitute area for mass. All right. um, and so now you've got to break it up into a system of manageable parts. And you can do this any way you want, but there is a way that uh, I'm going to do here. So you can try it on your own and then continue watching, or you can just follow along with I'm going to, what I'm going to do here. And then uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, so here's our object, and here is that little chart that we've got off to the side. If I count the number of unit areas, what I end up with here is uh, 20 square units, whatever the distance units are. For B, so B is this second one, A, B, C. Can you could split it up differently, but this is how, how I did it. For part B, section B, it's 15 square units. That's a U, sorry. Uh, and then C comes out to 40 square units. So that gives us a total mass of, uh, but mass again in terms of area, just 75 square units. Now we want to find the x-coordinate and y-coordinate of the center of mass of each plate. Right? So the center of mass of this plate, notice this is two units wide, 
So obviously the center is going to be right here in the middle with an x-coordinate of 1. All right? And then it's 10 tall, and so that means it's going to be right in the middle here at 5. It's going to have a y-coordinate of 5 units. Right? For b, let's see, b is 3 wide, right? It means the center mass is going to be one and a half units in, but I'm adding it to this, right? This is, if this is my origin, I've got to have the same origin for all of these. So it has an x-coordinate. The center of mass has an x-coordinate of 3.5. This is 5 tall, and so that means the center is going to be 2.5 for its y-coordinate. And then for part C, the x-coordinate turns out to be 7.5 units. Right, just take the center of this thing, that's 7.5 units from the origin, and the y-coordinate is 4. Okay, so now let's take a look at, you know, x center of mass and y center of mass. So here's the x center of mass equation, 1 over the total mass, times, then the a, the mass of a, times the x-coordinate of a's center, so 20 times 1, plus, and then 15 times 3.5, plus, now I'm going to do 15 times 2.5, sorry, this should be, that's not the case, 40 times 7.5, this is for part C, and that comes out to about 4.97 units. The Y center of mass, again, 1 over 75, the Y coordinate of part A is 5, so 20 times 5, plus 15 times 2.5, plus uh, 40 times 4. This comes out to 3.97. So the center of mass is 4.97, 3.97. Okay. okay. In example three, we have a circle and we have a hole cut out. That is supposed to be a circular hole, but I'm not a great artist, um, and I was trying to get the proportions right. Anyway, this hole is this ho the center of the hole is 0.3 meters from the center of the circle, and the hole itself has a radius of 0.4 uh, meters. So that's that's what it looks like. Okay, so what is the total mass of this thing? Right, big M. Again, we're not given the mass. So what we can do is we can do this in terms of area, right, the surface area. We're told it's uniform, so it has the same amount of mass for each, right, individual piece. Uh, and so the total mass is going to be the area of the big sphere. What I can do is I'll call this um, pi big R squared. You know, I'll say that R, big R, is 1 meter and little r is 0 0.4 meters. How about that? So the total mass is that thing, but minus the mass of this hole. And that is given by pi times little r squared. All right. Uh, and so when I when I write my equation here, what I'll do is I'll make the coordinate axis right here. So the center is the center of the big circle. So the x center of mass is going to be one over. It's going to be pi big r squared minus little r squared. Okay. And then I'm just plugging in these distances, right? So the, this mass is pi big R squared times zero, and now minus, I'm actually, I'm going to subtract, let me put it down here, minus the mass that's missing from this hole. So that's going to be pi little r squared times, and what is the center of that hole? That's 0.3 meters. All right. So now when I put all this into my calculator. We can simplify this a little bit, right? So let's see what happens. This goes away. So this is going to end up being negative. The pi's cancel out and I'm left with r squared times 0.3 um, over big R squared minus little r squared, where little r is 0.4, big R is 1. Uh, and so you put that into your calculator and you should get about negative 0.057 meters. What does that mean? That means the center of mass is actually over here, 
0 0.057, so not, not too far over. Um, but that makes a lot of sense, right? If this thing is balanced and there's no hole, that means it's the same on both sides. But if I take away something that where most of the mass is concentrated on the right, that means the center of mass is now is going to be a little bit to the left. And so that's it for lesson one. And I look forward to seeing you on day one of school.